If you're wondering what you should be priming on the inside of your house before you paint it, then this video is for you. I'm gonna talk all about it right about meow. Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vassar here with Practical Painting. We are professional painters here to help DIYers become better painters. And in this video, I'll be going over the top 10 things that I recommend you prime in your house before you paint them. Regardless of what surface you are priming, the whole goal of priming is to properly prepare that surface so that when you go over it with your top coats of finish paint, that that finish paint then cures correctly and you get a nice uniform finish and everything looks super snazzy. So I'm gonna go through my 10 recommendations and then at the end of the video, I will be sharing the four primers that I keep stocked in my truck pretty much all of the time. Uh, they're either stocked in my truck or my house and it's these are the four primers that I use uh, and it kind of covers most of the things we're going to be talking about today. Without further ado, let's start with number one, which is new drywall. There's a variety of reasons you could have new drywall in your home. You could have had some renovations where they did some big patches, a hole in the wall that required a patch of new drywall, uh, or you could have had a big remodel where they've re-rocked an entire bathroom, uh, something like that. In that case, you're gonna there's going to be a mixture of new drywall and spackle, and as long as that spackle has been sanded and is ready to go, uh, then you're going to need to prime that whole surface before you start running your top coats. And uh, we like using, you know, basic drywall primer from Sherwin-Williams. Uh, you can use a multi-purpose primer from a variety of uh, brands. Also, a lot of folks really like using PVA primer, which stands for polyvinyl acetate primer. It doesn't matter that you know those words, but it's a solid product. You can get it relatively inexpensively, and a lot of times the PVA primers come in big five-gallon uh, buckets. So if you have a lot of drywall to prime, I would recommend going that route. In a similar vein, that brings us to number two, which is spackle spots. Pretty much anything that'll work on drywall will also work on spackle spots because the two are so often used together. Uh, so you might have some spackle spots that are, again, with new drywall, but also you can just have spackle spots that are over uh, existing painted walls. You might be filling nail holes, doing patchwork, trying to smooth something out. A whole bunch of reasons to have spackle spots all over the walls. And as long as they, they are sanded and ready to go, you're just going to prime those with, again, you can use the PVA, drywall primer, multi-purpose, any of those are going to work. And uh, what that'll do is keep that spackle spot from flashing through on your finish coats. If you don't prime it and then you go over it with a regular paint, even paint and primer in one, because that's not a real thing, uh, you will see where that spackle spot is uh, and that it's called flashing and it'll flash through your finish coats and it's not going to look awesome. And that brings us to number three, which is raw wood. Uh, raw wood looks like this and this is just an actual uh, stair tread, but a lot of times you will see raw, unstained, untreated wood in uh, trim work, in window sills, that kind of stuff. Uh, sometimes you have exposed edges of new doors that are completely raw wood. So that needs to be uh, primed. And I would recommend using something like this, which is wall and wood primer from Sherwin-Williams. This is one of my favorite primers to use. It is the Mercedes-Benz of latex primers. Uh, but if you don't seal the raw wood in with a primer like this, uh, then what will happen is a lot of times the tannins will bleed through, the pores in the wood won't be filled, and then their top coats are not going to look good. Uh, and it also take you just way more coats, usually of trim paint, to get it to where you want it to be. So I would highly recommend using a wall and wood type primer. A lot of times the multi-purpose primers will also work well. Uh, so those are the two that I would recommend using for any kind of raw wood interior application. Number four is when you have a dramatic color change. So usually this is on the walls, uh, but say your your walls are this top color here, really light shade, and then you're going to be painting them this really dark color down here. Uh, what you're going to want to do is get a multi-purpose or even a premium wall and wood primer and uh, get that tinted to be a dark gray. Uh, so they call it like a P4 or a P5 primer. It uh, just depends on how dark of a color you're going over top of it with. What that does is just saves you from having to do like five coats of red or blue or whatever your dark color is. It kind of starts it uh, pretty dark already. And then on the flip side of that, if you have uh, really dark walls that you're trying to cover up and your finished paint's going to be a lighter shade, then you want to go over that with a nice multi-purpose primer that's just usually untinted white. Uh, will do the trick so that you're, uh, you know, you're covering that dark color and that way you don't have to go over it way too many times with your lighter finish paint. Number five is stained or polyurethane trim. 
Uh, it could be uh, woodwork, doors, whatever. A lot of folks will convert that from that stained look to painted. And in order to make that conversion, you're gonna wanna use either a shellac or a oil-based primer. Uh, I like using Ben from Zinsner. That's my current favorite. Uh, a lot of guys like using cover stain as well. Uh, it's a little bit thicker and some people think it's easier to work with. Uh, but in general, you're going to want to go with a either shellac or oil-based primer. Uh, if you don't do that, then you're going to have issues with the latex either covering and having a lot of bleed through of the stain or gripping issues, adhesion issues, where as soon as you touch it, it's going to flake off. That brings us to number six, which is oil-based trim, very similar to the polyurethane and stain trim. Uh, we do a lot of conversions of this as well. So if you have an older house, a lot of times, like the house we're in right now is a farmhouse, everything's been painted with oil-based trim paint, and we're converting that over to a different product. In order to do that, you need to, again, use a shellac or oil-based primer. If you don't do that, that's a big problem. If you go straight over oil with latex, the latex will not adhere properly, and as soon as you scratch it even slightly, it'll flake right off, and that is not what anybody wants. So, uh, again, you need to use a shellac or oil-based primer, and uh, the current champ in my book right now is Ben from Zinsner. Uh, that's my favorite one to use. If you don't want to use a shellac, then I would go with the cover stain. Uh, which works really good too. Uh, also, there are some newer products that are hybrids that are trim paints like Emerald Urethane Trim Enamel or Advanced from Benjamin Moore uh, that say you can go straight over an oil-based product and it will adhere properly because it's uh, a hybrid. Uh, however, I have seen if you don't prep those surfaces well, which means you need to use a deglosser and probably do a little bit of sanding uh, in order to get a good adhesion from either of those products. So just be aware of that. If you're going to go that route, just make sure you've prepped those services as well. Number seven is priming after you have stripped wallpaper. Uh, the big concern here is that there's gonna be glue residue left over from the wallpaper backer, and that's how it actually sticks to the wall. And if you go over that residue with a latex-based uh, wall paint, which is probably what you're gonna be doing, you can reactivate that glue and get this weird crackly look, which looks terrible, and that's not what anybody wants. Uh, the other thing to be concerned with is if you have dug into the walls if you, as you have stripped wallpaper, uh, then you can expose the drywall backer and you can kind of see those big brown spots. That's super common. You're going to want to seal all that in so none of that comes through in your top coats. Uh, a lot of folks like using a product called Guards. It pretty much resurfaces the entire wall uh, and it looks really nice. It's a little bit difficult to work with because uh, it's pretty much like rolling on water, so just be aware of that. You can also use a shellac-based primer like Ben. That's what we generally use. You can also use Cover Stain, uh, but some folks have a problem with how uh, much fumes are generated using those product because you're rolling on so much of it. Uh, so you can switch over to the odorless version of cover stain. It's, it's odorless, it's just less smelly than the original, uh, but it still works pretty good. Uh, that being said, if you don't wanna go that route, we have had quite a bit of success just using a straight multi-purpose latex-based primer. And I say that with the caveat of these were in the scenarios where the wallpaper stripped really nicely. We didn't have a lot of residue left over on the wall and we sanded the walls uh, before we ran our primer over top of it. And we've done that a bunch of times and it's worked out really well. It just really depends on how the walls look once you've stripped the paper. And if you see like there's a lot of junk in there, then you might wanna go with one of those more intense products. If you think you're ready to rip, then you can probably get away with a multi-purpose latex. Number eight is water damage. We see this a lot in first floor ceilings where the upstairs bathroom has leaked for whatever reason, and you get a nice brown stain in the ceiling. If you don't prime that, then it'll just keep bleeding through any of the coats of ceiling paint that you put on it. If it's a small enough spot, I like using kills. This is just spray kills. Uh, we used to use the upshot, but uh, the nozzles on those are garbage. So we switched over to the regular and these work really well. Um, again, this is just a spray oil-based primer and it works uh, fairly nicely. You can do a decent size area. But uh, if you've got a much larger stain that you want to roll, then I would use the Ben shellac based primer. That works way better, in my opinion, than even some of the other oil-based primers that I've used. So uh, that's what I would go with, either the Kills or the Bens. Number nine is any uh, kind of dark marks that have bled through your uh, top coats. So it can be pen, pencil, marker, anything like that that keeps kind of bleeding through, dark scuffs on the wall, things like that. And I have a little example for you. I prepared this board and what I did is uh, 
it's a piece of drywall that's been primed and has a top coat of wall paint on here. And then what I did is I drew a dark Sharpie line all the way across it. And uh, I think you can probably see it in this other camera a little bit better. But in the middle, you can see the original Sharpie line. And then uh, over here on my right is the, uh, I just did one more uh, top coat of the wall paint. And you can kind of see there as I try and get that. You can see it's like coming right through right there. And then over here, which you can't tell at all, I kills that line. So I hit it with spray kills and then I did another uh, top coat and you cannot tell at all that there's any kind of uh, mark underneath. So that's the big difference uh, when you use something like uh, kills to block those uh, types of marks. So it works super good. And the final item is soot stains. We ran into this a lot on our last job, which uh, generally you get them from gas heaters, fireplaces, um, uh, smoking does it. A lot. Even we had a house where they just lit a lot of candles and the smoke will go up and generally you'll see lines in the ceiling along where the joists are and uh, those soot stains will not go away if we've tried cleaning them but generally just smudges it around but a lot of times the previous paint is then stained so you're dealing with a massive uh, stain and usually they're on the ceiling sometimes it runs up onto the walls a little bit too uh, but the product that I've found to be the best is actually any shellac based primer and uh, I've used a number of them and I've said it a bunch in this video already but Ben is my favorite and you end up having to cut and roll the last job we had to cut and roll every ceiling with the shellac based primer which was pretty aggressive fume wise but it did cover everything and it worked really well so um, if you don't do that they'll it'll just keep bleeding through uh, and you'll see it no matter how many top coats you run so that is the tenth and final item and then to round things out, so here are the primers that I keep in stock all the time. I've got my spray kills for spot priming, and I've got a multi-purpose from Sherwin Williams, one of my favorite latex primers for general purpose use. And then I've got premium wall and wood primer also from Sherwin Williams, which is super sweet. The fourth product that I always have in stock is not currently in front of me because it's being used at my job site, which is how much I usually use it. And that is the Bin Shellac Base Primer from Zinsner. That's a super great one to have on hand at all. If you kind of have one of these from each category, uh, you can cover all your bases and pretty much all of your interior priming needs. If you found this video useful and you'd like some more insight into how to make your job move along a little bit smoother, then check out my three tips video, which I will post at the end of this one. But until next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, have a good one. Bye. Without further ado, excuse me, how dare you, Jeremy? I know. Amazing.